to part two of our series on short stories and writing short stories. Uh, my name is Chris McClellan, a former professor and now editor-in-chief with my wife Erin of the Provo Canyon Review, the literary magazine which is sponsoring this uh, series of lessons. Um, last time we just had a general introduction to writing short stories and this time we're going to actually talk about drafting a short story and we're going to talk about you know how to start out and you may already have ideas you may already have had stories that you've written um, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of a step-by-step -step, uh, structure that you can use you know when you're just starting out with a story um, basically the very first thing is to get uh, a, f a first draft down, you know, to get it down on the page. Um, and to do that, you just basically take sitting down at a computer, sitting down in a notebook, and just letting your thoughts flow, and just getting started, just letting the, th the thoughts just, just, you know, flow onto the page. Um, a lot of times you might want to start with a, a first sentence or you know, a character or situation that you have in mind and just, I know in my own personal experience with the uh, writing stories, I'll just kind of follow a character around in my mind. I'll, I'll, I'll let the character, you know, create a character and then just kind of see what he or she does and just kind of follow them. And that tends to be a lot of fun because you don't really know what they're going to do. And um, you may find that, you know, your characters surprise you with things that they do, and that's that's always a lot of fun too. Um, you know, basically, uh, where do story ideas come from? You know, everybody says, "Oh, you know, you need a good story idea," and it's like, well, you know, some people, you know, just have story ideas that are just percolating along underneath, you know, the surface, and you may find yourself, you know, doing a mundane task like washing the dishes or driving a car and suddenly it's like, oh, I got this great idea for a short story. A good idea in situations like that is to bring, you know, like a notebook along with you, one of those small notebooks so you can jot it down, you know, and then come back to it later and develop it. Um, but uh, basically we draw our story ideas from our experience, first of all, not that it has to be, a, you know, line by line um, recounting of an actual event, but you know we are influenced by the experiences that we have, and um, also the observations that we make around the world and how people behave. And you know, a lot of writers are really kind of amateur psychologists. They are interested in you know how people behave and the strange ways that people interact, um, and also your knowledge, your knowledge about the world, your knowledge about particular. Um, settings, you know, maybe where you live or um, knowledge you have about a certain, you know, field of work or, you know, um, you know, when it comes to like science fiction stories, you may have a lot of knowledge about space travel and things like that. Um, but those are the things that, those are the areas where you develop your story ideas. So story ideas can come from your, you know, your knowledge of a certain field of study or a certain career track or, you know, I, you know, if you're, say, you know, in the medical field, you may be able to draw from some of that for your story ideas. But basically, uh, you know, find a story idea that, um, that you find really interesting, you know. And one of the first things that come about when you have a story idea or you know you have like a first sentence or you, know, you have a character is that you know you have <coughs> you know a point of view which is uh, you know either first person which is you know the actual character is narrating the story the character is telling the story or you can have like a second person which is you um, that isn't used very often it's pretty experimental um, or the third person, like he or she, or some stories, they have we telling the story, but um, it's uh, basically, 
telling a story from a third person point of view. First person point of view works really well if you want to get that immediacy of the story and you want to get um, you want to capture a certain voice. You know, you, t you can tell a lot about a character by the way he or she tells the story, and that can be a really rich, you know, area to explore. Or a third person gives you a little more distance, but you get to cover more, um, you know, more area in your story as far as like you know, getting into the minds of different characters and showing their thoughts and feelings. Um, one thing I did want to say is that, you know, as you get your flow going and as you get your idea, you know, your your prose, your writing starts flowing and you're just writing it and just write it, you know, don't worry about grammar, punctuation, any of that stuff. This is a very rough draft. So give yourself a lot of freedom with, um, you know, how to, you know, while you're getting the story down. And you know, don't worry about you know, just worry about getting the story down. And uh, Hemingway said about this that when you stop writing a rough draft, always stop at a point where you know what's what is going to happen next. So never write a story all the way out until you don't know what's going to happen next. When you stop writing a story draft, you should always know a little bit about what's going to happen after where you just stopped. Um, you know, basically, you know, the best way, or one of the best ways to write a story is just to get, if it's a short story, is just to try to get the whole story down in one or two sittings. And, uh, and, uh, that, you know, is probably the optimal way, but a lot of times it doesn't come out that way. Um, but, uh, it is the optimal way. So, um. The next uh, thing we're going to talk about is the prime directive in <laughs> Now basically we're talking about the prime directive of fiction writing, which is to make it interesting, make it fresh. Um, if, like I said in the, the last lesson, you know, if if you're writing about something that interests you, chances are that interest is going to show through and it's going to be coming through in the writing, especially the energy that you have about that, the passion you have about that thing that you find interesting. And um, I've found many times in my own writing that um, really lends uh, a lot to a story, you know, if you first find it interesting and then as you're revising it, you make it interesting for others as well, the reader. And uh, so, you know, that's the main thing to ask yourself as you're writing a story and when you're looking back at it for revision sake is, is this interesting? You know, that's why uh, the first sentence is so important. First sentence should really draw in the reader. You know, just what, you know, you know what questions are being raised by this, uh, by this first sentence, and what um, what kind of interest is being generated? So, you know, that's basically the prime directive: make it interesting, make it exciting. This next section is called the inner critic, every writer's battle. Basically, what we're talking about here is. When you're writing, when you're flowing, when you got that story just you know going with a lot of momentum, you know, uh, there's a inner critic that will come up. Certain ideas, certain negative ideas, certain discouraging ideas will come up. Oh, well, that sentence isn't that good, or gosh, why am I writing this, or you know things like that. Just very discouraging, and everybody has that. Every writer has that at some point when they're writing. You know that everybody has to face that inner critic. It's like an inner demon that um, tries to undermine your work. And basically, what you have to do is just resolve to be um, relentless in refuting that critic. No, this is good. I'm just starting out. I don't need to criticize everything. Um, this is this is going to be good. 
and you just basically build yourself up you know whenever you have doubts about you know the work and the inner critic um, you know can be very strong and um, can can really hold people up and that's a lot of times that's what they call writer's block you know a person gets writer's block they just can't they can't get any ideas going can't get a flow going and basically that's the inner critic you know attacking the writer and telling them that they you know, that what they're writing is no good. Well, don't listen to that voice. We all have that voice. Don't listen to it. Just trust your story. Trust your story, trust your characters, and just continue writing. And um, there's a really good book by Julia Cameron called The Artist's Way, which gives you techniques in how to fight back with this critical voice that's inside you. And uh, if you're having trouble with writer's block, or you're having trouble with that kind of inner critic struggle and you just can't get things on the page or you're just having a hard time with it, you know, I'd suggest getting that book and working through some of the exercises in that. I think that would be very helpful. But basically, you know, give yourself free reign when you're writing a first draft. I think that's the main point I would like to get across today is that resolve not to be critical of the writing at all until the first draft is done. Just give yourself that freedom. Just allow the story to come out. Just let it write, let it come out, and uh, you'll find that, you know, yeah, it might not be perfect, you know? It might need work. And that's where revision comes in. And some people kind of shy away from revision because, you know, it's like, oh, I just got this whole story out. Now, now I have to revise it? Well, set it aside for a little while. Set it aside, and then maybe come back to it and see if you can revise it and come up with some ideas to shape it and make it an even better story. Because that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make good, interesting stories um, the best that we can. And uh, when the first draft is done, you know, we can start looking at the revision process. And that will be part three. So next week, we'll start talking about the revision process and how that can help you to really fine tune and polish the writing that you get down on the page or in the computer. So for my wife and I at the Provo County Review, I'd like to say good luck with your writing, keep at it, keep going. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, uh, we have the YouTube page and we always welcome hearing from you. So. Um, once again, good luck and happy writing. <laughs>